Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan. Let's look at today's top headlines. Brazil study demonstrates real-world efficacy and safety of lupins ranibizumab biosimilar Ranieyes. Ranieyes is the ranibizumab biosimilar which is an Indian ranibizumab biosimilar manufactured by Lupin Limited and approved in India for various indications such as retinal vein occlusion, neovascular age-related macular degeneration, myopic macular neovascularization and diabetic macular edema. Ranieyes is an anti-VEG intravitreal injection that is available in Indian market since 2021. It has been developed as a biosimilar to reference product Lucentis and it has been found to be safe and well tolerated in the preclinical and clinical development program biosimilarity being demonstrated through quality analytical and pragmatic clinical trial studies recently the brazil study by dr ashish sharma et al has been published in the journal of vitreo retinal diseases a peer reviewed journal of the american society of retina specialists brazil study is a real world multi center uncontrolled observational study across seven eye care centers in india a total of 474 ranibizumab biosimilar injections were administered to 268 eyes of 254 patients the study included patients who received at least 1.5 mg ivt injection of rani eyes to evaluate its effectiveness and safety the treatment was given for diabetic macular edema macular neovascularization retinal vein occlusion cystoid macular edema and proliferative diabetic retinopathy with vitreous hemorrhage the mean follow up duration was 7.7 plus minus 5.4 weeks the results revealed findings which include significant improvement in mean log mar bcva that is best corrected visual acuity was observed from baseline to the last follow up as follows in diabetic macular edema cases improvement was observed from 0.77 plus minus 0.37 to 0.43 plus minus 0.25 in macular neovascularization cases improvement was recorded from 0.95 plus minus 0.53 to 0.59 0.59 plus minus 0.42 in retinal vein occlusion cases improvement was noted from 0.83 plus minus 0.40 to 0.44 plus minus 0.32 in pdr that is proliferative diabetic retinopathy cases with vitreous hemorrhage mean log mar bcva improved from 0.71 plus minus 0.54 to 0.28 plus minus 0.37 though this change was not statistically significant significant reductions in central subfield thickness were noted the cst improved significantly overall and in the dme group M- mnv group and rvo group in eyes with pdr and a vitreous hemorrhage the overall mean cst at baseline was 341.6 plus minus 183.7 improving to 229.5 plus minus 25.3 In cystoid macular edema cases mean CST decreased from 325.5 plus minus 50.9 to 251 plus minus 65 nm but the difference was not statistically significant the study noted significant improvements in BCVA and CST in terms of efficacy while none of the seven study sites reported inflammation vasculitis vision loss or other systemic drug related adverse events the findings of this preliminary real world study corroborate the clinical efficacy and safety of ranieyes as a ranibizumab biosimilar across the approved indications based on clinical evidence today we have with us dr ashish sharma who will be discussing some questions related to the study so so welcome to medical dialogues it's really a privilege to be having you on board here with us today thank you nandita thank you for having me with you so firstly if i may ask in your practice how common are retinal diseases like diabetic macular edema and macular neovascularization so nandita that's a very important questions you know this talks about the what kind of patient profile that i have in my practice or probably you know if you really want to discuss we can talk about asia versus west so overall you know same reflection goes with my practice because i practice in asia you can say so overall our uh, patient profile has more to do with diabetic retinopathy diabetic macular edema compared to asia retinal macular degeneration so we do have uh, macular degeneration patients but majority of the opd patients they are of uh, diabetic retinopathy and uh, complications related to diabetic retinopathy and we do have other diseases like retinal vena pollution means these are all retinal vascular diseases but major chunk is uh, diabetic retinopathy and related to diabetic retinopathy like diabetic macular edema so how do the bcv and cst improvements seen in the brazil study that you were talking about reflect in your daily practice Yeah so this is again an interesting question uh, so let me just brief you a little bit about the Brazil study so uh, I mean I lead a group called International Retina Biosimilar Study Group where we are trying to bring uh, real world data uh, about you know biosimilars uh, available across the globe so we do assess efficacy 
points, for example, BCVA, which is best connected visual acuity, and the CFT is central foveal thickness. So these are the two parameters, which uh, are the parameters which we consider that if a drug has a good efficacy, then it should perform well based on these parameters. So in Brazil study, which was uh, the real world study with the rainy eyes, which is a Lupin's product. So what we saw was overall, if you look at the overall cohort, overall cohort means we had patients with the AMD, we had patients with DME, we had patients with RVO, we had patients even with PDR, and uh, we had patients with the different kind of uh, a CNV caused by not because of AMD but because of many other diseases like inflammation, myopia. So overall when we analyzed the entire data and overall data BCVA and also CFT both were quite significantly improved. Both were statistically significant uh, answers that's what we received. But the question was not the overall data, because if you go to the nuances, each disease behaves in a different way. So if you talk about AMD, it has a different kind of progression. DME, it has its own resistance pattern and own progression. So to give a better answer to our clinicians or probably users, you know, who would like to see more of real world data and experience, we try to divide these uh, uh, overall subgroups in uh, overall data into subgroups like how drug behaved in AMD cases and how drug behaved in DME cases. So to our surprise, even when we divide the, the entire uh, cohort into subgroups, each and every group of diseases they also revealed that drug was quite effective and a statistically significant improvement was seen in each and every indication. And even when we divide this entire group into treatment naive and pre-treated patients as well, even then we saw that each behaved quite robust. So overall BCVA and CFT data was quite robust and now Coming back to your question that how do you see that in your clinical practice? So if you really look at the Brazil study, the entire data came from the clinical, you know, our day-to-day -day clinical experience. So that itself shows that what was reflected in Brazil study, that is the same thing we see in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. So a wonderful drug with great efficacy in terms of improving BCVA and CST both. And so for a young ophthalmologist who's starting practice, how would you advise them to approach the use of biosimilars like Reni Eyes? So Nandita, this is a, a, you know, quite an important question. You know, I, I appreciate that you have asked this question because whenever a lot of young ophthalmologists, they start their practice, what happens, you know, they try to choose a, a drug, you know, which can be accepted by majority of the patients because uh, when you build your practice you try to offer cost effective options because uh, you have not built up the confidence of patients in the beginning and your follow-ups and number of patients are less so you try to provide them you know the best option in the most cost effective manner and as of now if you talk about overall nt vegf spectrum Avastin is something which is the most cost effective drug so far, but unfortunately, uh, a country like India, we do not have robust compounding pharmacies that West has. So we have had some of uh, the bitter experiences with Avastin. A lot of uh, you know users and clinicians, they burned their fingers because of some of the infectious incidences. But drug is not blamed. Avastin is not a bad drug, but overall, you know, over compounding is something you know, which is not robust in our country. And at any steps, if something goes wrong for a young ophthalmologist, before even he starts his practice, it's a you know, difficult thing to handle. So biosimilars play an important role there because they provide a cost effective solution to your practice in the beginning itself. 
and they are cost effective something like 60 percent you know price cut if you compare to the innovator molecule and with a similar kind of efficacy and they come in a single vial so you do not need to worry about fractionation compounding pharmacies so right from the beginning you can include them and start your practice with all these biosimilars and Renia is a wonderful option I am I know, personally using that in my practice as a first line drug how do biosimilars like Rani Eyes help in making treatment more affordable for patients in India? Yeah, I means I think ultimately, you know, we have a spectrum of uh, medications available. Now, if you look at, we have Ranibizumab, we have uh, a Flibercep, we have Ferrisimab, we have, you know, multiple drug options. But ultimately, if you look at the overall India injection rate per patient, you know, I'm talking about the data of approximately seven, eight years ago published data which is approximately two to three injections which is very very low and that is concerning and we all know that these diseases are not one-time diseases like cataract we need to treat these patients on a regular basis and sometimes diseases like amd till the patient or till the patient is alive we might need to inject that patient's frequency might be you know uh, uh, one month or maybe three or four months but we need to treat these patients to keep their vision alive to keep them you know fit so that they can at least see the world so this is a so important question and discussion that should happen between a clinician and a, a clinician and a patient that you know I'm going to treat you but you are my patients from today and this association is going to go very very long now that i'm coming back to your question affordability you know we know that we are going to treat this patient for a very very long time but how he's going to afford it we have medications which cost sixty thousand per injection and seventy thousand per injection it's not really feasible for a country like india so biosimilars like rainy eyes they have come with a blessing that even in a much much cost you know efficient manner you can treat these patients for a very very long time so this is the beauty of biosimilar world since uh, it has been introduced we are seeing in our practice that now the number of patients who were affording only two to three injections it has gone up to five six in a year which is great so that's where the cost you know effectiveness plays an important role in terms of overall patient's improvement and his overall you know because this vision is something which has an impact of many other things overall his livelihood overall his uh, family so with these kind of cost effective treatment in a country like india you know we can really really help these patients in not only by treating them it has a ramifications at many other fronts as well so lastly if i may ask sir do you feel that more indian real world studies like the brezza study that we're talking about today are important for building confidence in biosimilar among doctors so you uh, last but not the least what's such a wonderful question so we asked this question nandita back in uh, i think four to five years before because when uh, india was the first country to uh, introduce renibizumab biosimilar and over the time now if you see renibizumab biosimilar is available across the globe and it has started in the u.s around three years before means uh, i have a close connection with u.s and european colleagues so uh, we were conducting a lot of courses uh, in Euretna, in uh, many other meetings for the uh, you know, different countries. So we could assess, we could get a feedback that people were not really confident about the trial data. Because trial are very, very small in biosimilars and that's how the regulatory defines it. And that is not wrong, means, but because as a retina specialist, we have been seeing big data, but suddenly biosimilars come with a small data and that creates kind of a negative, you know, perception in many clinicians, which has happened in India when we started in 2016. And over the time now we have phenomenal confidence, but it took a lot of time. So to assess, you know, what kind of perception clinicians they have, we conducted surveys 
we conducted survey uh, from European, UK and uh, US retina specialists for their population because uh, you know that's where uh, the drugs were being launched and then we had a survey with Victorian Society of India with all the retina physicians who practice in India and both the surveys they had similar kind of uh, you know takeaways and the takeaway was majority of the clinicians said we do not really believe in uh, uh, clinical trial data because they are truncated so we would like to see real world data so that's what uh, we took that uh, you know kind of of uh, answer that we received and I formed a group called International Retina Biosphere Study Group and now we have approximately 45 brilliant clinicians across the globe because biosimilars uh, are everywhere nowadays so that we can bring real world data with the help of each and everyone from each and every country because that is what something in surveys was told to us and we started with the uh, different different biosimilars and Brazil study was one of the part of it and now we have also recently published Eflibercep biosimilar data from Iran and then another manuscript of Renipism biosimilar from uh, US, UK, Europe. So as a group lead, uh, you know, as a lead of uh, International Retina Biosimilar Study Group, this is our firm initiative that real world data has to be in for better confidence for clinicians, not only in India, but across the globe. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for your valuable insights.